Small Ball. The Death Lineup. One of the greatest teams to ever step on the court. Bang! Steph Curry from way downtown! From 2014 to 2019, the NBA was completely dominated by the Golden State Warriors. And even today, almost every team has completely shifted their strategy to mimic what the Warriors did to revolutionize the game. So how the hell did that happen? How were the Warriors able to feature a lineup of Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, and Kevin Durant, the number 44. That's how. Today, Steph Curry is one of the most recognizable athletes on the planet. By the year 2025, he's set to make over $59 million for one season alone. But it wasn't always that way. You might know the story of Steph, being the son of former NBA sharpshooter Del Curry, or that despite being small and lanky, he was picked seventh overall in the 2009 draft out of Davidson. What you may not remember though, is that Steph did not immediately set the league on fire, like some of his later counterparts. In his first three seasons, Steph's points per game averages were 17.5, 18.6, and 14.7. Solid, but nothing special. On top of that, he had a reputation for being injury prone. So by the end of his third season, the Warriors front office had a decision to make. Do they invest in Steph, or do they go with Monte Ellis? Yes. You may not believe me, but this was a real debate at the time. After all, Monte had averaged over 20 points per game for the last three seasons. He was athletic, exciting, and arguably the better player overall. But at the trade deadline in March 2012, the Warriors decided to move Ellis to Milwaukee for Andrew Bogut and Steven Jackson. At the time, all the experts thought Milwaukee won the trade. Little did they know how wrong they would be. That offseason, the Warriors front office, a bit wary of Steph's long-term durability, offered him a four-year extension worth $44 million. In 2012, this was actually good money for Steph. During his rookie deal, he was averaging only about $3.17 million per year. So an average of $11 million was a well-deserved big-time upgrade. In the 2013-2014 season, the Warriors won 51 games and Steph showed remarkable improvement, averaging 24 points per game and making his first All-Star appearance. But that wasn't enough for coach Mark Jackson to keep his job after the Warriors were eliminated in the first round by Chris Paul and the Clippers. Replacing Jackson, the Warriors brought in former NBA player and ex-Suns GM Steve Kerr. Not much was thought about it at the time, but NBA basketball was about to change forever. Kerr took a look at his roster. The team had drafted well over the years. After Steph, the team added Klay Thompson, Harrison Barnes, and Draymond Green in consecutive drafts. And almost immediately, Kerr knew what he had in the steph Clay combo. This might sound obvious to us now, but three-pointers are worth more than two-pointers. Crazy, I know. And even crazier to think about now, teams used to avoid taking too many threes because they didn't go in as often. Kerr and his coaching staff had a revolutionary idea. What if they put five players on the floor, all of whom could drain the three? Traditional defenses with slow, burly big men wouldn't be able to defend them, leading to wide open three balls. Factor in that Steph and Clay were becoming two of the greatest shooters of all time, and you basically become unstoppable. Because of Draymond's versatility on defense and his ability to defend taller players despite only being 6'6", the Warriors had a lineup that was both faster and more athletic than any other team. The result was immediate success. In 2014-2015, the Warriors won 67 games, won the NBA championship, and Steph Notch's first MVP award, despite being severely underpaid. In 2015-2016, the Warriors did not let up, winning 73 games, the most wins ever by a team. More than that, he was completely revolutionizing how the game is played. In his first three seasons, Steph attempted less than five three-pointers per game. By 2015-2016, that number was over 11. He averaged over 30 points per game and was the unanimous winner of that season's MVP award, a feat that has never been done before or after. Truly historic. But remember that number 44? Steph was still on that contract. So while teams like the Lakers were giving Kobe $25 million, the Warriors were able to turn around, trade Harrison Barnes to the Mavericks, and sign former MVP Kevin Durant to a two-year, $54 million contract. Barnes was a solid 3 and D forward who fit well into their system but he never averaged more than 12 points per game. And even after that insane season, the Warriors ended up losing to LeBron and the Cavs in the finals. Durant, on the other hand, was a multi-time first team all NBA coming off a season where he averaged 28 points per game. No shade on Barnes, but that's what we call an upgrade. With Durant on the team, the death lineup got even scarier. The Warriors would go on to win the next two championships and then fall short to the Raptors in 2019, but only after injuries to KD and Clay. Today, Steph is the highest paid player in the NBA, and the Warriors just tacked on their fourth championship in eight years. But 
The Warriors dynasty all started because Steph signed that cheap contract. They were able to retain Draymond, Clay, and Durant just long enough to extend their championship window into truly historic dynasty territory. Other teams have tried to copy the Warriors strategy and the idea of the big, slow-footed NBA center who can't shoot is quickly becoming extinct. If you want to be a big man in today's NBA, you need to be able to stretch the floor. It's why you see Giannis, Embiid, and Jokic jacking up shots from beyond the three-point line. In the 2013-2014 season, the Rockets led the NBA in three-point attempts per game with 26.5. By contrast, in the 2021-2022 season, the Bulls averaged over 29 three-pointers per game, which put them last in the league. All because Steph signed that cheap contract. Hey! Hope you enjoyed this episode of How the Hell. Make sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comments section what topics you want us to break down in the future. I'll see you next time.